As reptile enthusiasts, we've heard the craziest rumors and myths about what we love, but I'm gonna tell you 10 reptile rumors and myths that are absolutely not true, and you've probably never heard of them. Growing up, we all heard crazy reptile myths and rumors, and then as we got into reptiles, we hear more of them. But what you wouldn't believe is outside of the Western world, when you're traveling, oftentimes you hear the craziest ones, and it makes sense. So let's really dive deep into them, and let me know in the comments how many of these 10 you've heard of. Number 10, poisonous geckos drop deliberately into soups and cooking pots in order to poison you. This might seem crazy, but I understand it. I heard this one for the very first time in Bali, Indonesia. Somebody from a, like a faraway village, let's say, where there's really not a lot of people from the Western world you'd ever see, told me this one and I couldn't even believe what they were saying. And it turns out a lot of people believe this and there's, uh, I guess, a little bit of a reason for it. When you're in Southeast Asia, especially when you're in tents or these areas where, you know how you have like glass windows and like stuff doesn't get in your house? Places like this don't have stuff like this. There's just geckos all over your house. So you see them on the ceiling, especially when it's nighttime and there's one light and they're all kind of going towards the light looking for the bugs and they're all above you. And sometimes in the middle of the table, a poop will drop from one of these geckos or a gecko itself will drop. So you've got to think people are cooking with these geckos over top of them. The heat sometimes will disorient them or the steam anyway, and they'll drop into pots. This does happen. So that part of the myth is true. However, the two parts that are not true, they don't do it deliberately. I promise you no gecko is trying to fall into the dish that you're making as they're about to succumb because of the heat. Also, they're not poisonous and that's not why people get sick. Although it is possible that people do get sick from having these animals plop into the dishes that they're making and then eating them because maybe they do it at the end and they don't get cooked and they get salmonella or maybe it's just the droppings of these animals that are going in your dish and that could make you sick or at least make you not want to eat it. So is there a little bit of truth to this? Well, yes, there's geckos all over the place in this part of the world inside people's homes and do they probably do fall into dishes as you're cooking them, but they're not poisonous and they're not trying to kill you. Number nine, crocodiles cry when they eat people. Or there's another one where crocodiles will cry in order to lure people in. You know that phrase crocodile tears? Like, you know when your three-year-old cries when they get in trouble and they're not actually sad, they're just trying to make you feel bad for them? Crocodile tears, they don't actually mean it. That is where this comes from, which is something I didn't know. I've heard the phrase, didn't know. In parts of India and other parts of Asia, this is where it originates from according to my research, crocodiles will cry on land and it will lure people in and that that's how they get their prey. Well, first of all, most crocodiles don't prey on humans. There definitely are some populations of crocodiles that see humans as easy targets, especially in parts of the world where people are smaller and probably do prey on humans, but this is really rare. Secondly, they don't cry in order to lure humans in and they certainly don't weep when they're eating humans in order to lure other people in. There's no magical spells. They don't have emotions like that. We've all seen videos of crocodiles feeding and they'll rip their buddy's arm off because they think it's a piece of food. And the guy who got his arm ripped off doesn't care and just cares about the food. Like these are freaking dinosaurs. Not saying they're stupid or anything, but I promise you they don't have an attachment to the person they're eating and they're crying because they had to eat like no, that, that's not real. Number eight, alligators living in the sewers. Now, if you're an elder millennial like I am, maybe you've heard about this before because there was this whole thing, especially in the 90s, where people would let go of their pet alligators that they didn't want anymore and they would live in the sewers and then all of a sudden grow up and there'd be, be these big man-eating alligators in the sewers. That never happened. Is it possible in the 1990s or 80s that alligators were flushed down toilets once their owners realized they were too big and couldn't feed them because it was actually pretty easy in a lot of parts of the world, like New York City, for example, and definitely parts of Florida, to buy one of these at a pet store? Yeah, 100%. I absolutely believe that a whole bunch of alligators during a certain part of time were flushed into the sewers. However, they probably died immediately, and even if they lived, they're living in literal sewage. These animals are, I mean, primitive, I guess, in terms of like they can eat a lot of different things and they live with like car batteries in their stomach, not car batteries, but like batteries in their stomachs. So yeah, maybe they lived for a bit, but there was no man-eating population. This isn't like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles sequel with alligators. I promise you this never happened, but I do remember hearing this on Popular Mechanics for Kids and they spouted it like it was gospel, like it was true, which is hilarious because I do, I do love that show. That was the best show. 
Number seven, snake charmers can make snakes dance. Well, sort of, I guess. I mean, if you watch a snake charmer, that's what it looks like, but there's a problem. They're not dancing to the music because snakes don't have external ears. And things like cobras, for example, don't have the greatest sense of hearing. They can feel vibrations or maybe hear a little bit, but they don't hear like this. And what the latest theory is, is that these snake charmers use a flute, which is a visual distraction, and they have the vibration of this flute, and then they move their bodies in a way to create a threat to these snakes. The snakes perceive this threat, and then they're just kind of like going back and forth and making sure that, you know, the threat isn't gonna be threatening. A lot of the times these cobras, especially in parts of India, they have their mouth sewn shut or they are defanged. Oftentimes they are starved or dehydrated in order to make them more docile. So the entire practice is outdated and terrible, but it is pretty interesting to see, I guess, once, but we should really stop doing it. Either way, the, the snakes are not dancing to the music. And, and I don't know if you've heard snake charming music, like it, I, I wouldn't dance to it either. Obviously as pet keepers, it's really fun for us to listen to these funny myths and obviously we know they're not true, but there's other myths in the hobby itself for captive pets. Like they always have to be expensive, it's difficult to find them, shipping is really difficult and dangerous and those things aren't true as well, especially thanks to today's sponsor, Palm Street. Palm Street does a few things for me. First of all, it's never been more fun to buy reptiles on the internet. It is super duper safe. You log onto the app, you find one of the really, really fun and interactive auctions. They go on for two or three minutes. If you win the critter that you bid on, boom, it gets shipped to your door. It could not be easier. And shipping is flawless. So easy, so affordable, and so safe. Not only that, but it's a community. The Palm Street community, I love those guys. I interact with so many other sellers and it feels like a family. No bots, no bad actors, just a really, really great time. And there's even longer form auctions for more expensive or more rare animals. And if you wanna start selling your animals a more fun way and be part of the community, there's a special link down below just for you. And if you're looking to buy your next pet, I am so excited for you to try out Palm Street. There's a link down below there for you too. So check out what I'm doing on my favorite app, Palm Street. Number six, crocodiles live forever. Now there are theories out there about different things in the world that don't have natural lifespans, like the lifespan is just forever until they get killed by something, which is true for most things, but crocodiles are not immortal. This is something that people believe, even like the Western world, I guess, Australia is not Western, but people in Australia will tell you that Crocodiles live forever and they have to be killed by something. Although that is true for most animals, most animals don't die of old age because they get sick and weak because of old age and then something eats them. That's how it works. Crocodiles are really no different. Eventually, maybe they're going to break their jaw or their teeth are gonna stop growing in properly. They're not gonna be able to eat properly. There's a whole bunch of things that happen to elderly alligators and crocodiles, but they're not immortal. You're not gonna find a 400 year old crocodile like we did with that Greenland shark or whatever it was. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Crocodiles have crazy lifespans. They can last over hundred years, but I mean, we've never found a 200 year old crocodile. They eventually die. Number five, eating lizard parts can cure diseases. Now this is a rampant thing, especially in Asia where People will buy rhino horn for infertility or shark fins for infertility or to cure cancer or in these cases, but eating lizard gallbladders or other parts in order to cure asthma or blindness or so many other things. Trust me, if eating gallbladders of lizards cured asthma, I would have eaten a lot of gallbladders by now, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't work. I'm actually positive it doesn't work. This is something that is probably folklore or ancient medicine that's not really rooted in reality. And you know, I'm cool with different people's cultures, but maybe don't kill lizards to eat them for properties that they don't actually exhibit or have. So if there's an apocalypse or you're just really sick in normal life, don't just start going to eat your lizard's organs. Diamond would not approve and it's not gonna work. So uh, don't do that. Although that is probably the most well-believed around the world of all of these myths, probably. Number four, this is one I've never heard before. Snakes sting with their tongues. This actually makes sense. I did quite a bit of research and went down some rabbit holes on this. Apparently places in the world, parts of Africa, Asia, I know I keep bringing up Asia, but that's where a lot of these venomous snakes and crocodilians and stuff are. People really don't have the opportunity to study these animals like we do here. They don't have TikTok, they don't have Instagram, they don't have Netflix. These are pretty primitive places in the world where they know that snake 
killed people in my village before, but they don't know how, and that's how rumors start. And sure, maybe you've seen a dead one and really looked at it, but most of the time, people who see these dead snakes aren't looking in their mouth to see what's going on. They see these snakes cruising around their village, and they have those tongues, those forked tongues, so two little projections out of their mouth, and they notice when someone gets bit and dies, there's two little puncture wounds. So it really makes sense. They've never looked in the mouth of this animal, they don't know that they have fangs, but they do know they have a forked projection coming out of their mouth, so they put two and two together. This is actually pretty logical. If you don't have science and you didn't grow up knowing and you don't examine a dead individual, you'd have no idea that these snakes have hypodermic needle type venom yielding fangs and that's how they kill people. They would just assume that, well, you get licked by one or punctured by one of their tongues and then you die. This actually makes a lot of sense. But of course it's not true. It's not how it works. Number three. Snakes chase you. Now this one I've talked about before, but you would be amazed how many comments I get. This is always like a somebody from the deep south who had a copperhead chase them. And listen, it's just not true. And I know that someone's gonna comment is gonna be like, I saw it happen to me. It didn't happen to you. If these animals lunge at you or they go like, two meters, I don't know why I'm doing meters and then talking about the states. Say, I don't know, they go like six feet or 10 feet after you, they're just trying to get you away from their nest or whatever, and then they'll back off. They're not gonna chase you a football field away. That is not something that happens. They're not chasing your canoe through a river. That is not what happens. And if it is so true, and I've heard this so many times, show me a video of it. There has to be one video. If snakes do this, Show me the video. It doesn't exist, doesn't happen. Sometimes things like cobras, I've been out in the jungles of Southeast Asia, and a cobra will lunge at you and go, you know, six feet, 10 feet to make sure you're away from the nest. But once you're away, they don't follow up and start chasing you again. So no, your uncle's grandma's dogs went, didn't go duck hunting and get chased by a water moccasin. Like that, I promise you that just never happened. Number two, snakes drink milk. Now, milk snakes, this is something that people believed until like very recently that milk snakes drank the udders of the cows or would puncture the udders of the cows with their teeth and then drink the milk. So people didn't want milk snakes around their fields or around their cows because they thought they were hurting their cows. No snake in the history of Everdom has ever drank milk. It's just not, well, I mean, there is snilk. There is a doctor, Dr. Fexneck once did inform me of snilk. But anyway, more realistically, they don't drink milk. They're not gonna go to your cow. They're not gonna bite your cow. Even if a snake like this did bite your cow, nothing's gonna happen. The cow's not gonna get infected. He's not gonna get sick. He's not gonna die. It's just not true. It's just not true. And as a side to this, just as also part of number two, corn snakes found in cornfields, people would say, ah, they eat corn. They don't. Snakes don't eat corn. Corn snakes will eat the mice in your fields, which is good. I mean, you know, they're pretty good to keep. A lot of people keep barn cats, right? Which are gonna kill all the birds and other stuff. But maybe you should just keep like some snakes around to eat all the barn mice that you don't want around. Snakes are to mice that you don't want around as spiders are to mosquitoes that you don't want around. How about that? And number one, snakes eat people. You would be shocked how many times I'll have somebody say, well, aren't you afraid that you're your snakes are gonna eat your kids or your dog or your yourself? I'm like, well, not really, because ball pythons are like five feet long, and although maybe my kid is like two feet tall, I promise you no ball python is trying to eat my child. Not only that, because I'm not stupid, I don't put animals that could hurt my kid around my kid. Just like you don't do that. The golden retriever is much more likely to eat my baby than diamond, okay, or a ball python. Now this myth is kind of true because there are accounts and confirmed sightings of reticulated pythons in Asia eating humans. That has happened. It happened last year and the year before and many years before that. It does happen, but it's super duper rare. It's always a very tiny human out in the midst of one of these animals that is, you know, seeking heat, that's what they do. They see the human, it's a prey item, it's smaller than the deer that they're actually looking to eat, and that's just what happens. Uncle Bob is now in the belly of a snake. So yes, like the Mo Moby Dick would actually be a really good name for a reticulated python. But in captivity, reticulated pythons are not trying to eat you. Your Burmese pythons are not trying to eat you. That's not happening. Keep yourself away and safe, and yeah. They don't eat humans unless 
well, they, I mean, like seven accounted. Let me know in the comment section below what you think is the craziest myth that people have not heard of. Not like the ones where they're sizing you up to eat you or like they roll in circles. Like give me one that people have never heard of before in the comment section below. And because I do videos twice a week, I'll see you next week.